Hello, this is Lucky Wizard, and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the Milano vs. the Abelisk from the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 like a set line. So this set is a brand new set that, in, that includes a lot of the main characters from the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and it's a really great set overall, and my favorite part is the Milano, so we're going to start off by looking at the Milano. Here we have the Milano, all propped up on these three uh, transparent beams. These are included in the set, I just propped it up so we, that way you can see how it looks like when it's uh, sort of above the ground and how big it is. So the main bulk of the set in, is a lot of these larger pieces, a huge uh, cockpit panel here, a lot of large wing pieces, one that has a sticker in Milano on it. This is a one large piece all to together here, and then a couple stickers. Uh, a lot of stickers in the set, uh, you, you probably need to put a lot of them on. Maybe not ones like this, where there's a blue sticker here, but other detailing like this one, you could probably leave on this detailing. Uh, up the front, these two, this and this, that make up the main curve of the beak of the sort of Milano, these are actually attached on from the side. They're both panels that had to be attached sidewards. And if you open the cockpit up, you can see how that goes together using a few different curved pieces, a few hinges. Uh, there's a couple of also other control panel over here to control this thing from where you can sit down in the driver's seat and then there's an awesome mix uh, awesome mix cassette tape I guess over there if you turn this around it looks great from the back as well it doesn't look bad especially with the wing panels all extended it looks great uh, it gives it a lot of character like it's uh, like a falcon or an eagle and this whole part here with all this detailing looks great uh, the sticker just carries over, so you want to try and place this one as close to the edges as you can. Besides that, this panel, this this wheel, I mean, uh, you can actually stick a fire piece in here, so if you want it to look like it's going into overdrive. It's not included in the set, but it's a pretty cool idea if you have a spare one of those pieces. Uh, it's caught a couple stud shooters there. Those can just work by pressing on this and then it fires off the stud. Uh, around the, on the wings, there's a couple of these uh, T-shaped Technic elements. The ones at the top just put it onto the thing, and then these ones can be all posed very, very well. There's a lot of different ways to pose that. It's great to, different, to get different looks from that. These ones are just on ball joints. They're not as useful for posing, but they still look good. It's still posable. On the bottom, you can see... Okay, one of one of these... I might as well break off all the stands there. One, one of these... Uh, the stands that it goes up on, it's just a regular sloped brick. And then a couple, a little bit of a built up sort of mud guard sort of pattern there. A couple of boosters, these can be angled as well, a lot of angle things to work around with. On the bottom, you've got a couple of these red boosters. So th those are supposed to be sort of like bombs that you can drop. So when the Milano is flying over, you can see these, which don't stick out much, which is good. It's a very good thing that the mechanisms don't stick out because otherwise it looks really bad some sets with the bright red lever sticking out. So Imagine the Milano is flying in, and you press it, and it drops the two, and then you can press it on the other side. So it's just an effective way of just releasing some some bombs to go and attack. So that's a pretty cool feature over there. That just works by having a little bit of these Technic uh, bricks that just have a little bit of gap in there, and then you just press this axle back and forth, just press them out. But yeah, the Milano is great. This whole Milano is really good. There's not much space inside the cockpit, but I'm going to come back to that later after I finish the minifigs and everything else. But yeah, that's about the Milano. The main villain in the set, sort of, is the Abelisk, which is the first piece that they fight in the movie in the opening sequence. This is a great build for the Abelisk. The tentacles and everything works super well. It looks kind of familiar to a certain beast I've seen before in a Doctor Strange set, but it still works great. It looks like its own thing, especially with... A lot of these stickers that make up sort of like the scaly sort of skin of it. So that looks great over there. So this whole thing works really well all together. Uh, this base that's, that's um, a grayish color, that's actually supposed to be part of a floor. And then the abelisk is breaking through it. Like you can see parts of the full broken off. You can see his skin. So this is actually a massive creature, but only his head sticking out. Uh, the tentacles around him, you might see were on gears. This means that they can be tilted around in a really cool motion. It makes for some pretty great uh, play sets and ways to make it look like it's struggling through a space. 
It works really well to make it look like it's a flailing sort of monster that looks really dangerous. This tentacle over here is just on a ball joint, and then this tentacle here can't really move much. It's just on a peg, so it's not really mainly for moving. The mouth opens up to, an, to a hilariously large degree, probably too much than you need. You probably know more than this would be okay for a minifig. Because inside of its mouth is actually uh, studs, we could get, you can actually put minifigs inside there and make it look like they're being eaten. You can put Nebula inside there. It looks like she's been eaten up. So that's a pretty cool feature. So you'd probably reenact that scene from the trailers and from the movie where Drax jumps in to the mouth because he thinks the skin is thinner on the inside. <laughs> but yeah, the Portal Beast is great. It works really well. There's nothing much to see on the bottom. It's a, it's a pretty solid build. I just like the ship. Probably a little bit less, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a decent little villain build. Alright, next I'm going to show you the minifigs. first two minifigs I have here are Starlord and Gamora. So these two are both wearing the same spacesuit, as you might be able to tell. Uh, there's, no di there's no difference between the two except for the hands uh, on the spacesuits. She doesn't have any stand, so she's going to keep on falling over the whole time. But yeah, um, let's start with Starlord then, because she just keeps on falling over. He has a really great hairpiece, uh, a new hairpiece for him in this color. But the hairpiece we've seen before, as well as the color. The face is a really good face, same one we got last time, but that's fine. And the, so the blasters, they still look really good, they're still awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, around the back you can see he has this jetpack build, and that just has a little uh, one by one uh, plate, and uh, also a binocular piece and the neck racket all little together. So that looks great. Gamora. So Gamora has the same hairpiece and face as she had last time. The sword is, I think, the same sword. Uh, the gunmetal grey color for the sword is great. Not much else to say about her, but good figure. Uh, I'll also turn around the faces so you can see what the alternate faces look like. Alternate faces. So the next two figs are Drax and Nebula. These two both have no hair pieces, but they're both really detailed figs printing wise. So first of all with Drax. He has this amazing printing pattern for all of his tattoos. That goes all the way around both of his arms and the back of his head. Uh, the print for the torso is the same as last time. The headpiece is completely new. It's got a brand new uh, angry expression which more fits Drax, as well as uh, tattoos on the back have been fixed to look more like the ones in the movie. The pants are sort of generic, regular sort of spacesuit kind of pants, and his daggers are also kind of uh, basic sort of daggers that we've seen before in other Lego themes. But Drax is an epic figure. The tattoos look great. I'll just give you a closer look at those. You can see they're really detailed. Might be hard to pick that up with the camera because it's side enough to focus. There you go, you can kind of see now. Got really detailed printing. There's a few Lego minifigure skull heads rather than regular skulls, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so really good detailing for Drax. For Nebula, uh, kind of a sort of regular figure. I and mean, they need to include her because. They need to include her, I mean, because she was a pretty vital part to this movie. Uh, her printing is pretty much the same as in the last one of her figure, except it's got these different uh, sort of bionic parts, elements showing through. You can see scars on the torso all over where it's been chipped away. You can see the metal on her body. One arm is in a really nice silver color, the same one as her katana, Gamora's katana. And she just comes with a pair of handcuffs. So that's about it. Yeah, the printing for the eye that goes over the eye. That sadly doesn't wrap all the way around because minifigs can't be printed like that. But when that does happen, we're going to have an epic looking nebula figure. Uh, there's only two more things to show you. So the last thing is Baby Groot. Now this Baby Groot is so cute. It's amazing. It's really tiny. It only it barely goes up to a minifigure's, no, a minifigure's waist. So it's really small. Both its hands can be, you can put clips onto it, such as this. So this is actually an Anilax battery, like the ones in the movie. This set comes with two of them, and they can be clipped into Baby Groot's hands, like that. So they're, they're, they're actually a peg piece on each hand, which is so cool, the way that's designed. The printing on Baby Groot goes on the front and back, uh, not on the back then, <laughs> but it's just a really good printing overall, just a really great figure to represent Baby Groot. 
It also comes with the Star-Lord's helmet, which I forgot to show you during the Star-Lord, but that's a, an updated helmet piece. Uh, there's a couple more bolded lines, that way you can see that a little bit better. Uh, a lot of detailing around the eyes have changed, but besides that, I think the actual mold for the helmet has stayed the same. One last thing is these two, which are an extra jetpack piece and I think a boombox, but it's not a great build. But you, if you want, you can attach the baby Groot's hand, so that's great. But yeah, I think that's everything I have to cover with this set. And that is the Milano vs. the Abelisk Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 set. It's a pretty good set all together. It's great to get the Milano back. I couldn't get the original Milano, but this one's much better. The colors are fixed. It's a lot easier to play with. One thing I wanted to show you though, was that the Milano is a little bit hard to fit minifigs in. Here, let me show you. In the movie, the Milano's cockpit can fit all five figures as well as all the rooms inside the Milano. It's fine that this only has the one room for the figs, but the other set managed to fit all of them as well as the pilot. So I'm gonna try and see if I can fit all the figs in this time. So first of all, I have Star-Lord. So I'm just gonna put him in. So he goes up in the front as much as he can. I'm gonna try and fit in Drax. He can just go into the side. I'm gonna try and fit in Gamora. She can go to the other side. And Nebula. It's a tight squeeze, but... And Baby Groot. Fit them in, <laughs> but it's not a great it's not a great fit for the figs. It's quite cramped, especially if you try to have Rocker Raccoon in there as well. It just doesn't work. Probably would have liked a little bit more space. Maybe taking up a little bit of inside of here. Probably having a little bit um, more space to have to fit the figs would be great. Uh, I understand that they did have to put a little bit more stability rather than size, but. Still, it's good that you can fit all of them in. It does give you space and studs to put them all in. Just take them all out. You can see that it gives you studs here, 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 and here to fit all the figs in. So, at least it tries to fit all the guardians in. But yeah, um, that's all I want to show you for the set. And I hope you all enjoy this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. This is LEGO Wizard. Have a nice day.